Good to see you guys via Zoom there, Terry and uh, Coach. Good to um, see you. Yeah, just, uh, you know, as we set out on the offseason here, what are, um, you know, some of the priorities uh, for Terry, uh, you know, getting ready for the draft? First question for Terry on the offseason priorities for the franchise. Well, we're going to take a take a few days here to, to, to separate from the emotions of, of where we are right now and and we'll get back in the building and obviously we'll have a collaborative effort and sitting down with author and, and his staff and the coaches and the scouts and evaluating uh, the season and every single player. And that'll be the beginning of whether a player is under contract or not under contract. That's the start. We evaluate every player and how we want to proceed um, with each player. And and then we start to formulate that offseason plan. So we need to just separate a little bit and so we can come in and with fresh eyes and be objective and evaluate every single aspect of this year. And uh, for Coach, um, uh, how will your uh, off-season evaluations of, of the season go? Have the coaches started on those? And, um, you know, uh, where are you all at with the, the evaluation process of uh, 2021 season? Yeah, d -Led, um yeah, that's kind of standard operating procedure. Um, we will, after anything, any any thing we've done here, you I think the smart thing is to go back and look at it. What can we do better? Uh, there's certainly got to be every year, whether whether you won the Super Bowl or not. I think you've got to be objective and and see where you can evolve and adapt. It can never stay the same. Uh, that just it just can't. And and we feel like we've got a great foundation here, D led, and uh, you know we we got a bright future and and. But we'll look at every single thing we've done and see what we can do better. Michael. Hey, y'all. Thanks for. He froze up on us, Mike. Mike, you're frozen. Tori, we'll roll to you real quick till we get Michael back. Yeah, this sounds good. Um, just kind of, I guess I'll start off this question for Terry. Um, salary cap rising in 2022. How do you kind of feel like this organization, do you feel like this organization is in a better spot in 2022 because of that? And how do you foresee that kind of shaping out the off season for you guys? Well, yeah, we're in a better spot because the cap did increase this year. That was one of the big challenges last year because of the cap um, going down so much. And, and, and we already had challenges prior to that. But this off season, the cap did increase. And yet there still are challenges here um, for the next couple of years. But Again, we have to look at every contract, every player, whether they're under contract or not, and make the best decision um, for this team moving forward. And then this question is kind of for both of you guys, big picture. Uh, what do you think is the difference between how you feel like this organization operates cohesively this offseason in comparison to where you were at this point last year, both of you guys just coming in here? Well, I think everybody's more familiar with each other. Um, Certainly the second time around, if you've done your due diligence and your process is good, it, it should go smoother. Um, it's just because there's just so many things to do here. One, as you're getting, you know, you start and hit the ground running, it should be a lot easier this time because you, you kind of understand how everybody operates and there's some things that we want to do better than what we did last time. And it just you're just more familiar. It's like any relationship. You, you feel like you know everybody better. Michael? You're muted, Michael. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Internet is apparently bad. Uh, yeah, so Terry, I was going to ask this, that last year you were talking about some of the cap constraints that you guys were working with. How do you manage the cap this year, you think, versus what you had to do a season ago? Well, again, still some some constraints, um, but we just have to look at look at every player and, and every contract and just – do the best job we can. Um, we know we have to bring in competition and continue to work to improve this off season. So um, th there are going to be challenges every year with the cap, but we just have to make the right decisions and the players we bring in, make sure we have clear visions for them and, um, and do the best job we can. And for Arthur, you talked about Des Kitchings last week. Is that the only anticipated staff change that you're going to have, or do you anticipate more changes? Well, it's hard to predict the future, Michael. There's a lot of moving parts. I think, you know, we'll take our time before we fill the running back job. Um, you know, we want to talk to a lot of people. There's a lot of movement going on. And so uh, right now, that's the only only movement we've had. But, um, 
you just can't predict the future because there's a you know there's a ripple effect depending on who gets what job and so we'll see but we'll take our time make sure it's the right person that we bring in here home team we can't hear you brandon audio issue on your end uh josh Terry, this one's for you do you have a uh how will you handle the calvin situation calvin ridley situation going forward in terms of when you feel like you need to know something has there been any communication thus far what's your expectation for kind of how it walks out well it really hasn't changed and it, we've as an organization we've done it the best job we could to just um, support Calvin and do everything we can uh, for him. And I know he made the statement when he did, and we made a statement um, th during the season as well. And really up to this point, nothing's changed with that. Do you expect him to be on your roster in 2022, or is it too early to tell to, to say at this point? Well, it, it's – look, we have a, a roster with a lot of players. You can go down and ask that about every single player, and we, we obviously – we're not going to answer those questions, but um, – Again, regarding him specifically, um, nothing's changed. Uh, we just continue to support him. Thank you. Home team, try it again. St still no audio, Brandon. Uh, D-Led, go to your follow-up. Okay, yeah, what's the, what's the plan to fix the lines in the trenches or – uh, offensively and defensively, a lot of sacks, weren't able to run the ball, and defensively, uh, last in the league in sacks. Well, you know, I love the loaded question, D-Led, but uh, like the whole team, we got to improve. I think it's, again, statistics, however you want to manipulate them, those are easy. Those are the low-hanging fruit. Uh, it doesn't tell the story of the whole season. It doesn't tell the story, you know, I, you know, necessarily how you win games. Um, like I said before, you know, we went seven and two in one possession games. We got to close the gap in the other game. We got to continue to improve. And there's a lot of ways you can fix it. D led obviously down the end of the year. We need more shots on goal. I think when you get in the game and you don't have the ball very long, and a lot of it was self inflicted. But when you average five yards a carry to make a grand indictment on the run game, I think that's a little bit at the at the surface level there. Um, we need to be better all around. So there's multiple ways you can improve the fronts. We got to improve this whole team you know, as we climb. I mean, the goal here is to sustain is sustain success and to win championships. And if that's not your objective, then you're just playing survivor and trying to manipulate narratives and stat pad. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a championship level team roster. And, and that's our objective. Well, um, what do I make of it being 30th in the league? Then I, I mean, I got to look at, you know, evaluate something. I'm not saying that, D, like, you're, you're kind of missing the point. Okay, yeah, help me out then. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I need some help. That's then. what I was trying to do is you're trying to win games, correct? And so if you sit there, we need to be better. We need more plays offensively. So we need to extend drives. We need to get off the field on third down. And like I said, we need to close the gaps in those games that we lost. That, that's clear. And there's multiple ways to do that. But like I said, as, as when you, we, I think we're 31st. And offensive plays run, and that's a team issue, and and that's what we'll do. I mean, there's everywhere you got to get better. I mean, if you if you win two games and you finish fifth in, in passing, are you patting yourself on the back? No. Well, we clearly we we're going to continue to improve, but um, it doesn't tell the whole story. There was times where against really good defense, we ran the ball well. We we need to do a better job sustaining drives, getting into the red zone, and scoring more points than the other team. It's pretty pretty practical, and we got to close the gap in those other games. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank Scott you, Bear. Uh, uh, um, hey, guys. Uh, this question is for is for um, skip me. I'm 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 sorry, Tori. Yeah, I want to kind of stay on the topic of what D-Led was talking about. Uh, Dean was speaking to us last week on the need to develop a pass rush, and he spoke specifically through the lens of talent acquisition and talent development. So my question for Terry is when it comes to the acquisition part of that, what is the blueprint of, of what y'all are looking for? 
Yeah, we're, we're always looking for pressure players. You're always looking for cover corners. Um, like Arthur said, it's a complimentary game. And so as we improve the roster and bring in competition at every position, that's going to help. When you're playing with leads, obviously you have more opportunities to rush. And, um, and it's a complimentary game. So we have to improve the entire roster. But we're, we're going to look at, at every avenue to, uh, to bring in competition, whether we're talking about uh, free agency, the draft, after the draft, we're going to work hard to bring in players to compete. And one more for you, too. I, I know this roster turnover was something that we talked about earlier in the year and, and kind of how this roster was going to change a lot. And um, I was just kind of curious how you feel like the front office did providing players in season to to kind of be slotted in to, the, to, to this active roster. I kind of think of guys like Anthony Rush, James Fodders. I was just kind of Curious your thoughts on that and kind of how important that process will continue to be moving forward. Yeah, Tori, I, I appreciate that question. And it's really twofold. I think the the personnel department uh, did a really good job, the, the pro department and um, and bringing in players, but then the coaching staff into developing those players, getting them up to speed and implementing them and having the confidence to play them. Um, and because those players, uh, some of the players you mentioned and some other players, helped us uh, in, in all offense, defense, special teams. So being able to bring in players during the season, the, the coaching staff and the scouting staff, I think they did a really good job with that. And we're going to have to continue to do that and, and finding players however we can. And Tori, that's why it's such a collaborative effort. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. And the way we operate here, um, I think, you know, the easy thing to do is, is and if you've seen this done a lot in this league, is you bring a player in, you know, and everybody wants credit for it. Or, um, you know, you win a game and and you want to get out in front of the parade. It, it's there's so much work that goes in, and and the, and you've got to be in sync because they those guys, the personnel department, they do a, a terrific job of of trying to you know, sort through the roster, see who is available in the spring, and then it's our job to make sure we have a vision for them. And, and they got to and you got to play them. I mean, you can't sit there and say one thing, you bring a guy in, and then you don't play them, and then you know, so it, it's got to go both ways. And that's why it's such a collaborative effort. You have to have a vision. You have to be in sync. Uh, so nobody's looking out here to jump in front of the parade because everything, the discussions we have daily, Terry and I and our staffs, is about the vision of building this roster to get to a championship level and to operate that way to, to win championships. And that's why we feel we're on the right path. All right. Michael, how to follow up? Yeah, Terry, this, this is for you again. When it comes to kind of decisions that might need to be made down the road on some of your own guys, whether it's Cordero or Foye or Youngway, how much do you weigh maybe their familiarity now and what their price points might be versus kind of that cap situation that we were talking about before? Like what, where does that balance for you in, in building this? Well, you go through that process again. It starts with meeting with the coaches and determining who you do want to proceed with. And and that's the beginning of it. And then we go through the process of, of looking at their market value. And it does make a difference when a player is in your building. And ideally, the best form of free agency is is developing and, and signing your own players, players that because you're not guessing. We know exactly who they are in the building. And so that's important. So ideally, when it's players in your building, those are players you want to invest in. But there are a lot of variables and you want to look at the market value and making sure you're making the right decisions. But when you can do that, when you can reward your players in your building, that's something that, that we want to do. And, and this is, I guess, for both of you. I know, Arthur, I asked about Matt after the game and you said, you know, after the game, you didn't want to be pinned into a corner with a couple more days. I mean, where do you guys stand as far as Matt being your quarterback going forward? I got the same answer I gave you Sunday, the same answer I'd give you in March or in April. Uh, I mean, we're, we're always evaluating our roster. I mean, to th sit there and back yourself in the corner and say that, you know, make some grand statement that we'll never, ever do this or that. I mean, that's not being objective and not trying to improve the roster. Same thing, you know, with Kyle Pitts or Jake Matthews or Grady Jarrett. I mean, you can go down on down the list. Um, there's going to be no state of the union because it's a constant evolution. You got to look at it and you never want to pass up an opportunity to improve your football team. So. I understand, you know, the headline you're seeking and what you're and you got to ask me a question, but the answer hasn't changed. Home team, give another shot. Yeah, we're still not getting audio, fortunately. 
Uh, Charles. Terry, appreciate you doing this. Um, it's uh, never too early to uh, look ahead to the draft, and uh, I wondered if you could uh, uh, give us a little insight as to you and your team and, and how you how soon do you start uh, putting together a draft board? And uh, at number eight, um, do you feel like this is going to be a year where you go for um, best available um, uh, regardless of regardless of position? Yeah, man, I appreciate you. And and yeah, we've been we've really had a draft board. It's really ongoing. And you have a draft board at the beginning of the season and it changes as more grades come in and as as players declare or um, whatever happens so that it's, it's really a fluid thing. Um, we've we've had a, a round of meetings. We have meetings. The next set of meetings are in February. So it's an ongoing process. And I think we, we've kind of talked about that draft process and that we always want to be a team that doesn't reach for needs. And we go into the draft with needs and, you know, you want to fill those needs, but you always want to take the best player on the board and not reach um, for, for something. And I think we think that's how you make mistakes. So um, it's an ongoing process. The, the college staff has been grinding all year and um, now it's to a point where the coaches are going to get involved in that process. It's going to be a collaborative effort. We'll make sure we bring in the best players we can. And, and if I can uh, follow up on uh, Josh's question to you about Calvin. And uh, I understand you guys have, have, have been diligent and, and, and being uh, sensitive to his needs. But of course, you've got to be protective of, of the team's needs as well. And so when you say nothing has changed um, as you're looking at your team needs, do you have to assume that he is not available to you for 2022? Well, no, I wouldn't assume anything. Like I said, we handle each situation um, individually. There are so many variables we deal with. We're going to try to add to every position um, this offseason. So so whatever player we're talking about, um, whether they're under contract, not under contract, we have to be prepared for everything. Mark Bradley. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is for Mr. Fontenot. Would you say um, that 7 and 10 is an accurate reflection of where your team was? There, or do you think that that record was flattering or um, that you were actually better than seven and ten? Well, it's funny because I, I read something at some point that said, talk about the point differential and how many games we should have won. And I think that says a lot about our team um, that what I really appreciate about our what author has built here, um, the coaching staff, the players that I do believe we're building a winning culture. We're not where we need to be. We don't want to be having this press conference right now. We want to be preparing for a playoff game. So we're not happy that we're not playing right now. That's going to be our charge moving forward. But I really believe everything that our head coach preaches about the, the culture and, and having a winning culture and being a smart, tough, competitive team. And you, you look at any game, you can look in the fourth quarter where the game can be out of hand and we have players flying around competing. Those players were bought in. Those guys in the locker room love each other. They, they, they love the coaches and they really went out and competed. So there's probably some statistics that can tell you how good we were as a team and how many games we should have won. But I believe we're, we're moving in the right direction and we're building that winning culture. And that's a credit, again, to Art, the staff and the players. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Rim. Yeah, hey, hey, Terry and Arthur, um, as, as you all head into year two how would you both of you define success in in this next year when you're sitting here in next uh you know ne next year when january February, whatever it is how would you define success for for year two for y'all for me it's pretty simple i mean we'll be better than we are right now and hopefully like terry just said we're we're not having this press conference this time of the year it's later in the year um so I and mean, that's the ultimate objective i mean for me that's pretty clear cut we Continue to improve, win more games next year, uh, continue to get better. Like I said, for our ultimate goal, you got to be to win a championship, not playing Survivor every year. And sorry for you. Yeah, I, I agree. It's about, without looking at scores in the game or records, it's about continued development and continued improvement. And again, that's something we saw throughout the year, continued development, continued improvement. We'll see that in the offseason. It's, it's about developing and getting better. And, and that's our goal. That's our challenge to continue to get better. Yeah, I, I guess 
to follow up with that then, so in, in year one, what were some of the challenges that you faced this season that you've learned from that you'll apply in, in year two? Yeah, for me or Terry? Uh, for, for both of y'all, sorry about that. Well, I mean, I think, you know, every time you go through something the first time, there's always the unknowns. You try to prepare yourself. Um, you go back and look at the last year, uh, almost 365 days now. There's a lot of things that have gone on. It's been a, a big time transition year. Uh, we did through everything we had to, to compete, to win, to, to change the mindset. Um, thought we made some pretty good strides. Obviously, we got we got a lot to we need to build on and improve. Um, but it was a it was a great challenge and going through it. Uh, you certainly your lessons learned all the time, Chris. And I think you're, if you stop learning, you stop growing. You, you might as well get out of this thing. Yeah, and, and one of the, the biggest challenges um, for me this year, I would say, when you come into a new building, when you've been somewhere for a long time, you have relationships with everyone in the building. We kind of touched on this earlier, and and you're able to build those relationships, and that makes the communication smooth. And and yet here with, with the COVID restrictions, with a lot of new people, you weren't able to build all those relationships um, as quickly as you'd like to, and that does affect things. And yet I'm excited about going into this next year where – we have built more relationships. Hopefully we won't have all the restrictions um, that we have going into this off season and we can continue to communicate in, in the right way. And um, so, so I'm excited about going into this year and, um, and having, not having all those restrictions that we had last year. d we'll go to your follow-up. Yeah, um, do, um, since the season's over, can we get an update on Matt Gano? And if he's uh, on track to be back next year, or or what's his status? Well, he's he he he's a free agent, um, oh. and, and and Matt uh, obviously we expected Matt to come back at some point in the year with that injury. That's why we um, handled the transaction the way we did, and that didn't work out. So, um, but um, but he's he's not um, he's he's set to be a UFA. That's right. That's all. Michael? Yeah, Terry, I, I want to kind of get back to something you hit on a little earlier, but when you were constructing this roster, when you look at how this season went, where where do you think was the biggest, I don't know, miscue that you made when you were building this thing, considering what you had had to work with? Miscue, um, I, I don't know. We had a specific plan in, in building the roster, and we wanted to structure it a certain way. And we obviously had a lot of one year contracts this offseason that was part of that was because of where the cap was. And then we wanted to bring in we brought in a lot of veterans this year that 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 really helped this team, whether they're going to be here next year or not, that it's going to build dividends moving forward. Uh, I felt like this is a really close group and um, and and they really we have young guys, we have veterans. And so we love the way we constructed the roster this year. We've said it already. We're not. We don't want to be having this press conference right now. We want to be preparing for a playoff game. So we're going to bring in competition and continue to improve. Um, so I wouldn't say miss Q. We had a, a plan last year and we implemented that plan. We'll have one this off season and we'll implement that. And, and also, when it comes to the pass rush specifically, what do you like out of a pass rusher? Uh, what do I like out of a pass yeah, rusher? What, what you I, I Dean, said, Dean said in his press conference the other day about pass rushers, and he said something like, "It's um, you're not coaching it; they just figure out a way to get to the quarterback." There are pressure players, whether it's a, it can be an, it can be an end, it can be a defensive tackle, a linebacker, a safety. Um, they just figure out a way to get to the quarterback. They're pressure players, so um, there, there's different ways that they do it. There, there's different guys and different ways they do it, um, but you're just looking for pressure players. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. Tori? Yeah, I just have one more for Terry. Um, I was really hoping to kind of get your evaluation of this rookie class. Um, how did their development in year one match the vision for, I guess, what you guys had for them when you picked them last year? Well, they played a lot. Uh, you, you look at it was okay. tops in the league in, in terms of the amount of snaps our rookies, the amount of games they were active for. And the amount of snaps they played, not just on offense or defense, but also in the kicking game, they contributed a lot. And that was our plan for them to come in and contribute and, and grow and develop. And obviously, rookies are going to you're going to take lumps and it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be ups and downs. 
What I love about this rookie class is the mindset of the group. I believe we have competitive guys that fight and compete and 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 it's going to be a challenge for them to continue to develop even into this offseason, develop and get better coming into this next year. So we appreciate the fight that we got from that group. We believe they're wired the right way. Josh. Hey, this may be somewhat hypothetical, so forgive me, but if, if you bring Matt back, do you feel like you have to do something different with the contract just from that cap number or is could you do it either way in your mind? Would the, could you make the math work one way or the other? We're not going to speculate on on anything regarding contracts or we're not going to go there. And a couple of random ones. Isaiah Oliver, how is his rehab going? Does that complicate your decision on what you do there at all? Well, without talking about because we have um, a number of players on IR that are free agents. So I don't want to start the talking about um, every single player. But without talking about that, um, we, we make those decisions. We, we'll look at, we're aware of where all our players that are going through the IR process are. And some of them you'll wait until a certain period to sign them. And some of them, if you feel good about it, that we can sign them. So that wouldn't restrict, a player being injured wouldn't restrict us from extending them. But I don't want to talk specifically about any players right now. And Arthur, one, Jalen Hawkins didn't play much Sunday. Was he still recovering? I know he'd been on the COVID list. Was that some conditioning stuff or was that a Correct. performance issue? No, it wasn't a performance issue. Um, obviously, you know, it's, I always say it's it's not one size fits all and everybody was dealing with different things. And and so it's so where we felt he was at coming back from it. And that's why he played the amount of plays he did. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's all the uh, question requests we have. So appreciate you guys joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, guys.